Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Together, Jake and his friends interview talents varying from actors, directors, writers, producers, composers, puppeteers, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I am one of your co-hosts, Matt Bingles, with my buddy, Julius. Hello. And our co-hosts, Juan McCola and Chris Bixby, and our host, Jake Deffenbaugh. How you doing? We're great. Really great. How, How are you? How are both of you? We're good. Doing great. <laughs> yeah. Who do we got today, Matt and Julius? Yeah. Who do we got this week? This week, we're excited about this Yes. One. He, he's an actor, a voiceover actor, radio host, and a puppeteer. That's a lot into one. Yep. Can be well, well worth it. Most of you may know him for some of his stuff he's done on Sesame Street. Most of you may know him as the voice of Bubble Buddy on SpongeBob yep. SquarePants. Here he is, Brad Abro. Brad, happy to have you here. Well, thanks, fellas, for having me. It's uh, a treasure to be here. Thanks. Oh, I like yeah, that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm awesome. It's a great day. What's what's wrong with today? Nothing. Yeah, so nothing. Exactly. Nothing, uh, nothing's yeah. wrong with today. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so we know who you are, but for those that don't, would you care to introduce yourself? Okay. Um, sure. My name is Brad Ebril. You get you did a very good job on summarizing what it is that I've done with my life. Although I wouldn't believe half of that stuff if you were to have told me a long time ago. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be an actor, a voiceover actor uh, for cartoons and video games and commercials, yeah. and you name it. And yes, a puppeteer as well with uh, Muppets and uh, also a radio host. So again, I-, I always say as a kid growing up, if you were to hand me my, my resume, I'd say none of it's real. It's all fake. There's yeah. no way I'm going to get to do any of that stuff. Uh, and so far, I, I'm, you know, every day is a new adventure, and I don't know what's going to be coming up the next job or next adventure. So it's been it's been a great life. It's hey, a great blessing. Nice. That's awesome. awesome. Can you talk about your background and how you grew up? Yeah, sure. Uh, I grew up in Miami, Florida. And oh, nice. it says on nice. my uh, radio bio, in fact, in all my bios, it says, uh, I was fascinated with voices, cartoon voices, Saturday morning cartoons, Mel yeah. Blanc, watching all those. Um, uh, and, uh, my father also hosted a television sh- show in South Florida. Oh, nice. So it was a, yeah, it was cool. It was a treasure for me to go to the TV station and see how TV was done. I mean, the, the news at noon was done there. He'd tape his show and he was at the time interviewing, mo- you know, any big celebrity of the day in the 1970s. And yeah. 80s. Wow. Uh, so I would get to go and, and see that stuff. And I thought that's cool. And also. There was also uh, a kid show that was filmed at the TV station called Skipper Chuck. Oh, wow. nice. <laughs> Skipper Chuck. If anyone grew up in South Florida, you knew that show. It was a kid show in the mornings. And uh, Scrubby was his assistant. And Scrubby also did the puppets. And so when I would visit the show, I'd be like fascinated watching him uh, doing the puppeteering. And there was one time he goes, hey, you want to join me? I'm like, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> So I lent a hand for a couple of uh, characters for that. And even Skipper Chuck was like, he was confused because normally he's only used to seeing one character. All of a sudden there's four and he looks over the window and he goes, oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> that, was a, that was a moment for me who, who was a fan of the Muppets and Sunstream Street going, this is fun. I like this. So never thinking that anything would come of that, you know, as a kid. But uh, like I said, yeah. if you'd have told me I'd been working with the Muppets at some point. I'd like, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing um what got you into acting same thing so being interested with just performing i was in um making my own tape recordings as a kid that was always fun for me doing silly voices yeah um and then around i guess you know elementary school i remember getting my first part in some thanksgiving play you know you got the cardboard construction paper hat on the big buck buckles <laughs> And uh, I think I had one line and I stepped forward and whatever it was, uh, they would not let us pray or something like that. And just remember that the audience and the feeling of that, I was like, this is fun. I like this too. And junior <laughs> high school had some plays yeah. auditioning. So I've wanted to audition for them and wound up doing like a three or four plays during middle school. That was just like, that, that was a great thing too. of like hearing the audience laugh and I'm like, wow, 
this is, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed being able to find new things to uh, adventure and explore with. And acting was one of those. So, you know, uh, fast forward to post college, I had done broadcasting in college and thought, well, really, what do I want to do? And it was when I moved to Orlando that, um, Universal Studios was just opening. It had yet to open. So I was a part of the opening crew and uh, I was still doing a radio show there. And also my first job was at the Ghostbusters. (laughs) Wow. Wow. The live show and also the street show. And at the time they were also doing a lot of filming in and around Orlando. I mean, they're like trying to make that the next Hollywood of the East. Um, And so these, these, these things would come through there, these, you know, different productions, Superboy, Swamp Thing, Super Force. Mm-hmm. And I worked on a, a few of those shows and I thought, well, this is great too. I can be an actor and get paid for it. What's not to like? Uh, so it was then and I was like, well, I could move two places. I said, it's either New York or Los Angeles. And I said, well, I'd rather be poor and warm than poor and cold. So I moved to LA and the rest is history. There you go. <laughs> nice. Okay. nice. So getting into that field with uh, acting, who are some of your inspirations? Oh, gosh. Um, certainly comedic actors for me, uh, as a kid loved Jerry Lewis to me. Yes. Nice. You could not get funnier or better than Jerry Lewis. So the story with that is, uh, I knew that he was going to be filming, um, uh, his, I, one of his last few movies, but it was called hardly working. And he was going to be filming that in Miami in South Florida. So I would pester my dad. I was like, dad, you've got to get him on your show. You've got to interview Jerry Lewis, please do what you can. He's like, ah, Jerry Lewis. I, I don't know. I'm not interested. Long story short, somehow somebody on his staff said, Hey, he's available. You know, can, do you want to get him on the show? And he's like, okay. <laughs> he wound up interviewing yeah. him, talking about the movie. They wound up becoming friends. So at some point he invites him to our house for dinner. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Jerry Lewis shows up at my house for dinner, which I'm just like, ah! It was was the greatest single event probably in my life uh, up to that point. And he did all of the, he had the lighter with the tall flame. He put the shoes on the wrong feet. He was doing all of it. And I was just like, I was his personal audience. And it was, it was amazing. So I certainly, you know, looked up to him as one of my icons. But other than that, oh my gosh, you know, voiceover artist, Bill Blank, and uh, Dawes, yeah. Dawes Butler, and you know, so many. hundreds of others. So yeah, yeah so go on and on, Frank yeah. Walker. Yeah, exactly. Tons That's of awesome. Awesome. Throughout your acting career, you appear in a lot of different commercials. Do you have a favorite commercial you appeared in? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Commercials are. It's a weird thing because it's the funny one. It's the memorable ones that do their job because people will yeah. come up and go, Hey, I saw you in that FedEx commercial. And I was like, <laughs> good because most people go, Hey, I saw you in that thing. I don't know what it was for, but I saw you in that. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so it's the funny ones. The FedEx, I just did a FedEx one where I'm at a golf cart in a tiny office trying to make a three point turn. That was a fun one. I did a series of commercials and I, this is a interesting sidebar, but, I did a series of commercials for Budweiser that were only shown in the UK because this was the year that they were hosting World Cup. And this oh, was wow. 2006, I think. Um, so the pitch was, hey, let's get some American football commentators to come over and talk about soccer, who we knew nothing about soccer. So very much a la a Ted Lasso kind of concept, mm-hmm. but this was well before yeah. the show. So we did like 20 commercials um, of us being football commentators, American. Wow. And it was wow. not a hard job because I do I knew nothing about soccer whatsoever. And those were hilarious. And we didn't get to see them here in the States, but there's probably a few on my website somewhere. But those were those were a lot of fun. And I shot those with um, Chris Diamantopoulos, who's the voice. Uh, of Yeah, you that's know. right. Yeah. Yeah. So those were fun. But any commercial I'm on, I'm always like, yeah. I, I know mm-hmm. I know Chris definitely remembers the best Western ones from Disney Channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disney Channel showed a lot of those best Western commercials I remember. Yeah. Yeah. With two parking too far from the curb, that was one of them. Yeah. 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 But the, the the one that most recently people were like it ran for four years, so it was almost to the point it was like enough. I've seen you enough. But it was me folding laundry with uh, our in laws who were moved in with us. 
Mm-hmm. And at the end of the commercial, I'm holding up, holding up my mother-in-law's giant panties. <laughs> so that was uh, that was a good fun one too. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, 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 one? Killer. I mean, you gotta get out of here. Oh come on, this again. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Know this by now. <laughs> All right. So, oh, no, no, Julius. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you've appeared and done lots of voice work on late night shows like the tonight show with yep. jay leno picture that folks yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah pretty yep. pre talent folks yeah as well as jimmy kimmel live can you talk a little bit about those sure that you know as a voiceover artist you audition for anything and everything that comes your way yeah. uh and uh there's a <laughs> few stories there was one of them where it turned into an on-camera thing and that was uh, on the tonight show with jay leno where it was just they wanted a fast talking auctioneer um and i said well i could probably fake my way although i'm not a real auctioneer but it was good enough to get the job and they made it a, a video that i shot that day that was kind of fun and interesting so i was on the tonight show normally voiceover guys don't get to be here in front of camera <laughs> um but for the uh the jimmy kimmel stuff they've used me a few times and normally what it was pre pandemic, I mean, I've always had my own home recording studio. I'm sitting in it right now. So I've always been able to record and do my stuff and send it to whoever needs it. But most of the places like to have you come in person and record there. So I'd go down to the studios in Hollywood. Well, there was one time where they said they needed uh, an updater. They changed the line. I'd already recorded it and they said they need it right now. It was like, three in the afternoon. I'm like, well, I'm nowhere near the studio. I can't get there. I'm trapped somewhere. It said, we don't care. Send it in on your phone. I'm like, really? So I remember pulling over on Santa Monica Boulevard somewhere. Uh, I think that's where I was. And I recorded these few lines in the phone. It made it onto the show that night. Oh, wow. Uh, so wow. that was the moment I said, okay, the bar has been set right here it <laughs> yeah. can be done on your phone nowadays <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh man oh man so now we talked to uh, matt mentioned this a little bit in the beginning but in the voiceover world of course on nickelodeon you lent your voice to the character bubble buddy and spongebob what was it yes. like working on that also how'd that come about yeah. So again, it was just out of an audition that they were looking for this character. This is first or second season. Yeah. First season. Yeah. yeah. So SpongeBob was still, you know, an unknown commodity at that point. Yeah. yeah. Right. They were looking yeah. for the character of his imaginary friend and the voice said something like, you know, he's an avuncular, happy go lucky, jovial type. And I thought, okay, I'll yeah. throw in what I think. They liked it. And I go in to record the session. Now with SpongeBob, the difference there is that most animated shows you're probably or film certainly you're recording your lines separate solo they'll feed you the line or you'll read from the script and just record it that way spongebob is done cast style where the whole cast is there oh wow um, so i was uh there at nickelodeon studios in burbank and i, I was sitting and they had me mic'd up in the back um next to clancy brown who does you know uh, yeah, mr. Great, Krabs. great many voices on there mr Krabs one of them so i'm just you know i'm just the day player brought in to do, do a couple of these lines because bubble buddy doesn't speak until the last you know few seconds of the episode yeah right um yeah and so that was i think it was 99 or 2000 yeah. so cut to i think it was 2019 something like that they bring bubble buddy back for Bubble yeah. Buddy Returns. That's right. Wow. Yeah, I remember wow. that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And, uh, and I walked into the studio and I was like, what took you so long? <laughs> I know. Exactly. I thought it was the first words out of my mouth. They're like, well, you know, we thought he'd bring them back. I was like, great. So again, I sat in the back next to Clancy and I don't know, we were just having fun. He goes, I like this character. And I was like, you should have me around more often. <laughs> so they should have me. Bubble Buddy hasn't yeah. been used a whole lot. That's yeah. one of, one of those. That, one of those SpongeBob characters that didn't appear much that needs to, you know, yeah. be used more. Yeah, yeah. I think exactly. he was. Yeah, he was only in maybe three episodes. At yeah, the but oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. but I was also, and this is another trivia, is that I'm the uh, I, Band Geeks was another very popular yes. episode. Yeah, so love that. I'm I, the, that. I, I, I am that. the I'm the announcer that says, "Ladies and gentlemen, the Bikini Bottoms 
you know, marching band. I'm that yeah, announcer nice. for that episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, I, awesome. okay, I remember that episode. Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, episode. That, yeah. that is awesome. Oh, yeah, amazing I mean, episode. Wow. So that's, yeah. uh, that's, a good, that's a good card to throw out. It's like, yeah, you know, I've been on SpongeBob. Most people go, oh, yeah, Bubble Buddy. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I know we awesome. have SpongeBob fans out there, and I know you're still able to do the voice. But can we hear a little bit of Bubble Buddy? Bubble Buddy, his I think uh, his last line on the first episode: "Happy Leif Erikson Day." Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. and we have SpongeBob fans. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not surprised for me. Um. On Disney, you've done voice work on projects such as Chicken Little and Gravity Falls. Can you talk a bit about uh, working on those? Yeah. So um, Chicken Little was an interesting job because it was uh, Don Knotts' last uh, appearance as a character. Uh, he was elderly, and so they needed a voice match for him. And fortunately, I, I was able to do a lot of Barney Fife impressions growing up. Mm. Well, you know what the problem is, and you need to take uh, Opie to Mount Pilot to get a haircut. You know, Floyd's not available. So so I was, I liked that character. And so they needed somebody to come in and do all of the, uh, essentially the yelling for Mayor Turkey Lurkey, which was his character. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm spending, I don't know, a, a session just, ah, ah, you know, just a lot of running around and, <laughs> and yelling. And uh, I think, think my name's in the crowd i don't even know if my name's in the credits or not but people are like what character did you do and i said well if i did my job right you wouldn't know any of it was me because i was doing it for don knots and they're like oh okay all right (laughs) so that was that was fun and then gravity falls uh again this was i think you know early on when nobody had really heard about the show yet that i came in and they did it kind of a different way where they had already recorded or done the animation so you're coming in to match the lip flap of the character. Oh. So that was uh, that was fun as Agent Trigger. And my, yes. <laughs> my nephews are still like, you're Agent Trigger? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that's me. <laughs> so that was, that was, those were fun, too, to do that. That's yeah. awesome. Any job is always a fun yeah. job. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> Both amazing stuff. Chicken Wonder has amazing songs. Yeah. 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 So in addition to acting in TV and film, you've done acting acting as a puppeteer what got you into puppetry yeah so it was those early uh early days watching the skipper chuck show in miami florida (laughs) limbo the (laughs) lion was one of the characters and i actually somewhere it's not in here but uh there was also because it was a daily show just before kids would go to school there was also a french chef three-fingered puppet with a big oh, chef hat on, who oh, come oh, on and oh. and tell the day's menus for this for the public schools today you're going to have a spaghetti and and I and I, there was one time when the show stopped taping that my father said, "Well, they had a box of these puppets. Do you want these?" And I was like, "What?" So he brought <laughs> a French <laughs> chef puppet that I still have somewhere. So oh wow, wow. that nice. I can't nice. think my son has it in his room. But you know, watching the Muppets, you know, the Muppet Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's great. Who who didn't as a kid get hooked on that stuff and exactly, exactly. my parents got hooked on it too. Kermit and yeah. Guy Smiley and just you know the Count and yeah. That's it was magical to me. Yeah, so, uh, that's why I was hooked. But it had remained a latent thing in my career, um, unused for most of it until around 1994 when I was moving. Uh, lived in Los Angeles. I'd moved here in '92, and then uh, my agent in Miami said, "Do you still puppeteer?" And I said, "Gosh, I haven't. You know, since." I was a kid. It's been a long time. She goes, well, can you? I was like, yeah. Uh, And I also see that you're bilingual. And I was like, yeah, functionally, yeah. She goes, great. There's a show. They're looking for bilingual puppeteers. I was like, really? Okay. So I shot this tape, um, I think, using a store-bought lamb chop puppet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I sent it, and I got the job for the show called Jelly Bean Jungle. Oh, nice. Which nice. was shot in Miami. And they did, we did two episodes. We did an English version and a Spanish version. And oh. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I was the only English speaking puppeteer who did both. The other characters would still have to lip sync to a Spanish speaker. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. And I said, well, I, I'm a little worried because, you know, my Sp- Spanish isn't flawless. And they said, nah, it's perfect for your character. 
he, you know, has kind of a dialect anyway. So he was a tough talking mouse, Bosco the mouse, who spoke. Nice. Him, so. Cuando hablando en español, you know, no me importa como le uh, pronunciación, pronunciación, you know. So they, yeah. they were fine with how I was pronouncing it. But that that kind of like re uh, restarted, reignited puppeteering for me. And then some things just, you know, one job led to the next. Mm -hmm. um so for pup for puppetry who are some of your inspirations yeah gosh it has to be uh jim henson for sure yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. of course um you know it's amazing what he was able to do from his mother's green coat uh starting off in sam and friends the early show how mm -hmm. i will also say this uh uh this was another fun there was a, another idol of mine stan freebird who was a comedian and voiceover artist and he also had a puppet show in los angeles um called uh beanie and cecil hmm. where he did some puppeteering he and i think it was dawes butler somebody's gonna have to google check me on that but it was on a local <laughs> station i didn't see it i didn't grow up out here but he did beanie and cecil in, in addition to all of the voices he was pete the puma you know he pete the puma and I grew up listening to his records, and so he too was an idol. But his puppeteering was not the focus of his career. He did that early on, but he also did voices later on. I got a chance to work with him on the Weird Al Yankovic show. Oh no! Nice. Oh, oh wow! wow. Oh, so yeah. it was. Yeah. I was just on set to be essentially a puppet wrangler, but he was doing oh, okay. puppeteering again. Um, and I had I brought my I bought his auto my bought it. I brought his autobiography with, biography with me. And I was like, Stan, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're, you know, you're an inspiration. You're, I'm, you're an icon to me. And so he signed it and I still have it. It's a treasure. He said, from one puppeteer to another, Stan Freeberg. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that, but, must have, uh, that must have been a very special moment. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you get to, if you get to meet your idols and your icons, yeah. I mean, that, so I, two of them for me, I'm like, well, I'm done. You know, yeah. I've got to meet two of them so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Uh, We've definitely had those moments, you know, doing this podcast, interviewing Marty well, I mean, Robinson. In the, yeah. Like in the puppetry world, we interviewed Marty Robinson, who was Telly and Snuffy. So. Sure. Uh -huh. You know, yeah, yeah, we've we've interviewed a lot of people that, you know, we, you know, looked up to as kids and still yeah. kind of yeah. to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Sure. Step, Stephanie Nabruzzo as well. Oh, yeah. 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 She's up there too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Dave Goals and Jerry Nelson and the whole Frank Oz, the whole crew. I mean, all yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 Oh, what fun they had. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So, so one of the things you did as a puppeteer is work with some of the other Muppet performers, as we had mentioned the name earlier. What was on uh, Muppets Tonight? Yeah. This is going to be a flashback, folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was That's it like funny. in the work with such a team like that? Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah. I had, so I'd done some puppeteering jobs, one, you know, building on top of another from that first series, Jellybean Jungle, to then doing ready fox and the 911 adventure with tony urbano and tim blaney who were two giants in puppetry and then that led to me working on men in black with the tony and tim and oh. uh it was right after i think the film finished uh 97 that i get a call one day out of the blue from uh the production coordinator christine who said hey would you like to show up tomorrow for uh, muppets tonight and i was like who, who's this? <laughs> Christine uh, Calandra calling from uh, production of Muppets Tonight. Are you available tomorrow? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'm available tomorrow. Yeah, let me check my... Yeah, I'm available. Uh, I don't know who recommended me. I don't know. How, I, honestly, I don't know how they got my name. But uh, I showed up and I was the part of, uh, what, six, seven episodes? Wow. Which was one of the nice. greatest uh, fun things to be a part of Muppets Tonight. Uh, just to be in the midst of you know bill beretta and dave goals and yes and Steve jerry. And jerry nelson and yeah and uh um, every day was i was there on set just like you know watching just waiting to be you know i was just helping out with uh, additional stuff whenever possible um yeah. bill beretta loved some of the voices he loved that barney, barney fife voice that i did so he gave me a, like a one line ed the office guy character for something and uh it was just amazing fun to see also the guest stars that came in like Rick Moranis. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
Oh, Definitely, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that Other was guys. another thing where I got to say, hey, you know what? I've loved you since SDTV. I'm a big fan. So uh, that was great fun. But, you know, and, for, and as far as the stuff, we were, it was, um, we were there for the episode when the artist, formerly known as Prince, formerly came, known came as on Prince. the set. Yeah. And uh, he was in that phase. And we, uh, Bill, myself, and I think it was Drew, I can't remember who, but we were doing those uh, Angels during the Angel song in the water tank. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was really cool. Wow. Um, awesome. But also helping out Bill Beretta with Bobo doing the hands on that. Also, uh, Dave Goals, I was doing uh, the hands for Gary Kawenga, which was a ventriloquist puppet. Oh, wow. Um, nice. But to, to one of the, so one of the, I mean, those are all great memories, but one of the <laughs> key memories I have is just, it was so bizarre and fun and crazy is that there was a, uh, one of the sketches called Les Holstein Space Cowdet. And it was Jerry doing his space cowdet character. Um, and at the end, it was Bill Beretta uh, having to get in a fight with, with this other cow puppet. And so I'm, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing his uh, right hand. And uh, it's Jerry and maybe Kevin doing the other character. So it's Bill, myself, Jerry, and Kevin in this fight scene that's got to kind of tag the whole skit. And we're literally, I'm just literally throwing haymakers at this puppet while they're doing the same bars. <laughs> and we're just doing this dance around the studio, filling the space of this wild fight. And I'm just like, I'm in the middle of this fight with some puppeteer giants here right now. I was like, I'm in the same scene with Jerry Nelson throwing haymakers. And it was, yeah, it was just yes. one of those too good to be true moments. Yeah, so I'm awesome. kind of curious. So since you were an additional uh, Muppet performer on that show, did you get to put on any of like the classic Muppet characters? Yes. So, oh, wow. Nice. Don't tell anyone. Um, but yeah, I did. Well, people fact, there was, the there yeah. was uh, there was a time when Dave was doing the Gary Coenga, which was a ventriloquist, and it was really complicated. There was a lot of mechanisms in there. Uh, and he goes, well, we need someone to do Gonzo. And, and Bill's like, hey, come over here, Brad. He put on Gonzo. And I'm like, really? Wow. He goes, yeah, sure. Oh, wow. So I put on Gonzo. Now, I'm a big fella. I'm six foot three and I'm 225 pounds. I'm pretty big. And I got, I got big meat hooky hands. So I put on Gonzo and he's got like a giant goiter right here because of my hand. It's just too big to fit in there. <laughs> and they go, uh yeah, maybe it won't work. I was like, oh, <laughs> darn. I was, I was this close. But, uh, yeah, I, I got to work Beaker in one of the sketches. Um, and during a break, uh, during lunch or something, they've got the cart with all the puppets. And I, and I said, well, I got to do this. So I go over and I put on Kermit. And uh, I just remember that feeling. I was just look, looking at Kermit when he's on my hand going, yeah, I grew up watching you. It's a very <laughs> bizarre kind of thing. Oh, that um, yeah, that's man. awesome. That afterwards they said, "Well, do you want to take a picture with her?" I was like, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> so then they put him on and put him over my shoulder. So yeah, oh, yeah, that's I, awesome. I got to do that's that. Amazing. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Before I do ask the next question, I want to briefly mention that you were involved in Spider Man Two as a puppeteer. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, movie. Oh wow, great no, fun. But, yeah, I saw it. I'm a big Marvel fan. I saw it. It was Doc yeah. identical. Yeah. So That's this awesome. was uh, this was in um, I forget the year 2000. Yeah, 2002. Two. 2004. So, yeah. Steve Johnson. Uh, Steve Johnson's XFX or Edge FX. Steve Johnson's a great you know special effects. Yeah. Uh, right here. They needed um, at the time the casting was for they needed uh, just a body double to fill out Doc Ock. Yeah, from while the, while they test some of the the, the theories of how they're going to make these tentacles work. Yeah. So I got that job just to be his stand-in essentially. So I go up to Edge Effects and it was me and another puppeteer Greg Ballora. Yes. Who they wanted to uh to to use for this. Well, we wound up being the first two hires for that job cuz we wound oh, wow. up staying in the shop and literally helping form these ideas of how are these tentacles are going to work? Are these going to be practical? How so? How are they going to work and we tried foam. We tried uh, uh, marionetting them with like dog leashes, and we tried a bunch of different things. So I was on that from the very beginning till the last 
shot essentially. And that was, uh, that was an amazing experience because again, Marvel was not what it is today. Yeah. It was still a Sony. It was that being shot at Sony with Sam Raimi, the great director. And, yeah. Uh, He's still good to this day. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And Alfred Molina was a lot of fun. Yeah. With. He was a great, uh, jovial kind of guy. We'd played darts, you know, we played a lot of darts waiting, you know, on some scenes. Uh, and that was a, you know, great fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we That's didn't awesome. know that the character would become what it is or obviously stay yeah. around in the Marvel Universe. We just thought, who doesn't love Spider-Man? Yeah. And, exactly. Uh, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So the, the tentacles were, you know, kind of kind of heavy. Mm-hmm. And there were two top ones and then the two bottom. The two bottom ones were controlled um, with, like, chairs specifically set up that could do many functions and the form many different things with the uh, – in fact, I've got – the arm of my nice. bottle right here. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> but uh, the that's top awesome. ones, that's, that's the one I was operating, and everybody had their own place, and I think I was his top left tentacle. And Alfred actually named them all, Flo, Mo, Mary, and Larry, I think they were. Words. So, you know, <laughs> I, you got to kind of work in concert with him very closely for where he's going to move, how he's going to pick things up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they were pretty delicate choreographed things that we had to work out with them obviously a lot of it wound up being cg which we kind of expected but still whenever practical it tended to look you know better but um that was uh that was an amazing time and i think it's even on my reel (laughs) of puppeteering of the one special insert shot of me having to break the clock tower arm uh (laughs) prop tentacle uh it was pretty amazing it was a lot of fun to be on that yeah that was in 2004, awesome. by the way. Yeah. So another thing you worked on with the Muppet performers was the Sesame Street special, Elmo Palooza. What was it like getting to work on that? Yeah, so that was, you know, just additional performing. I think I'd, I'd seen on your site that you'd spoken to Kevin um, Carlson. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Great. Yeah. Kevin's a good Great friend, and I think uh, nice. I, I didn't have a whole lot to do, except I do remember Kevin and I were doing the Two-Headed Monster in the back of one of the songs and it yeah. could have oh, been wow. christina aguilera i honestly forget it's one of it's one of the, the dark spots of like i think it was christina but anyway i definitely remember doing the two-headed monster with kevin and, the, and we were just we were laughing i think the whole time um trying you know trying to work close together in a two-headed character is kind of difficult but uh doing, doing doing some choreography and stuff but that that was great fun too yeah and that elmo is, by the you know awesome. elmo at the time was massive he was a world yeah. star oh, so yeah. Yeah. Exactly. he was blowing up big time then yeah 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 no so was there what do you remember anything else that you did in normal flus besides the two other monster I, honestly that's the one i remember because it wasn't it, i if i did two days on it i would have been surprised i think it was just the one day i worked on that um and maybe wow. maybe some other <laughs> incidental character i don't even remember honestly that's good. Co- that's cool. I mean, the two-headed monster. That's another very, you know, yeah. well-known yeah. Sesame character. So, Iconic, huh. yeah. yeah, definitely. Yep, sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, uh, do you still keep in touch with any of the Muppet performers? Um, Bill Beretta only on social media on occasion. I did yeah. actually wind up going back to Mu- the Muppets, the ABC reboot. Oh, nice! I worked a what couple now? of days on there as well. Oh, nice! Um, nice. I got to see. Bill again and give him a big hug. So that was great fun um, to be on that and help out. But, you know, with many of the other, I mean, the puppeteering community is pretty small. You've talked to probably a lot of them and yeah. found out, you know, we all yeah. tend to know each other. Yeah. So off the top of my head, Drew Massey, Tim Blaney, Victor yeah. Earth, nice. Carlson, Alan Troutman, uh, Greg Ballora, Donna Kimball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. So there's, yeah, there's, uh, you know, lots of these names. I'm just like, oh yeah, uh, of course we've, we've known each other for years and a long time now. Um, awesome. In fact, it was uh, Leslie Carrara, certainly, you know, you yes. know, yeah. oh, yes. you yeah, know, it was I mean, on Muppets yeah. tonight that, they, that she was really kind of uh, uh, performing and honing her feet as a puppete- puppeteer. Um, yeah. Wow. Spamala yeah. And a lot of the mm-hmm. other characters that she uh, was kind of working a lot of that. And obviously from that, you know, she got at me. That's right. We know where she is now. Yeah. No, yeah. Is. Yes. Oh, great yeah. character. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Really amazing. Yeah. My turn yours. I think it's yours. Cool. So, so you, you brought up, you know, just, just admiring Kermit. 
Do you do you have any other interesting like behind the scenes stories from your career as an actor and puppeteer? Oh gosh. Uh so many. Y- yeah, I mean, wow. That's um, another episode. <laughs> Just kidding. It could be. For for uh, as I've said, any day on set is a good day. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter what the job oh, yeah. is. If you're doing a voiceover, if it's an on-camera commercial, if it's puppeteering, it doesn't matter. I mean, whatever you're doing, you're, uh, you know, whatever the numbers are, you are the statistic one out of however many that gets to do what you like to do. So uh-huh. yep. never a bad time. But yeah. I will think yeah. of this one. There was uh, not too long ago, within the last, I guess, th- three or four years, uh, I shot a Geico commercial. Oh, nice. nice. About yeah. a man cave. And it's uh, me sitting in my recliner saying, you know, my wife and I, we couldn't do it. And they were trying to, it was that whole uh, series about combining things, bundling things. Mm. I, oh, wanted well. a, I wanted a man cave. My wife wanted something close to nature. So we compromised. And it shows us literally sitting in a cave. Oh, nice. Um, but I've got my TV set up and, and the whole man cave concept. Well, it's a cave. And so, she there's a bear that's living in the cave so oh, wow. this time i'm thinking well cg bear obviously that's going to be the case yeah uh yeah. And, and, and by then they just before this they'd shot that other animal on hump day the classic hump day oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 so classic. that was the same kind of series that, that i thought well okay it'll be a cg bear no. wow i show up on set and they, <laughs> i'm bear. sitting in the chair they go okay we're getting lined up for the bear and i was like bear like real bear they said yeah, There's yeah. A real bear gonna be here and they, yeah it's a thousand pound grizzly bear really i okay i didn't i was not aware of this and i was like oh, what do i need to know and they were starting to string up the uh, electric wire and i was like is so that's real wire and you go no we trained him as a cub he knows not to go past the wire uh, okay <laughs> but what happens if he oh, doesn't gosh. is there oh. He was like a trank gun. He goes, no, that wouldn't work. (laughs) Like, really? So if he gets wild, because he's a wild animal, and he does something, they said, yeah, I mean, even if with the tranquilizer, it'd take like a half an hour for it to work. So, you know, just remain calm, I think is what they said. Like, Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm my feet are at the end of the recliner. They're up. And several of these takes, he's brushing by the boots that I was wearing. (laughs) And I'm going, just let this go well, please. Because his job <laughs> was to tear apart a refrigerator in the kitchen. And he did. I mean, he literally tore that thing yeah. apart. Uh, um, that wasn't cr- the effects. That was him just, oh, going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, and it wasn't until maybe later in the shoot that I see the trainer who we you know, talked with. And he goes, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, he's That's been awesome. raised for a cub. Yeah. I noticed yeah. when I'm talking to him, he's missing a finger. Yeah, the trainer. Finger. Yeah, so the handler, he's missing a finger. I was like, did the bear do that? He goes, no, nah, that was a chimpanzee. I'm like, okay, I'm in safe hands here. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one of the many stories of, of being out here. In yes. Yeah. 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 One of the many examples of wacky things yeah, that yeah. actors have to face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So yeah. we talked about a lot of your work in the past. Can you share any projects you're working on now? Yeah. So um, uh, every day I'm also hosting the Ashley and Brad syndicated radio show, oh, uh, nice. which is a lot of fun. And it's just, awesome. um, we record the, uh, the breaks and the stations get to uh, plop that in between the music. So that's keep me up every day and um, working on something. And then um, also I've got a movie coming out where I'm the, uh, one of the leads in it uh, coming to Amazon, I think October is what we've been told. Wow! Ooh. Uh, so Oops. that was uh, that was great fun too. Kind of a drama um, where I'm uh, playing a Hollywood director who's coming to the small North Carolina town to uh, reconnect with my estranged ten year old son uh, and find out some of the similarities. But that's called Rosebud Lane, and that's coming out. Uh, sh- soon i think uh, october and on amazon nice nice yeah. i'll watch it awesome. and then, like, yeah, yeah, watch. and then just had you know the beginning of the year hotel transylvania transformania yeah wow. Ryan yeah. Hall was involved. yeah 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 that was fun yeah yes. great guy so, Everybody's involved. Yeah. so i'm kind of i'm kind of curious so with with acting do you 
what what do you prefer doing most? Do you prefer like commercials or TV or film? Uh, Like what? I, it's I, honestly, it is going to sound like a cop out, but it's a anything. It's, Yeah, there you it go. is such a blessing to be able to do, like I said, anything that I've been able to do so far, any voiceover, that's a win on camera commercials, puppeteering, doing a film, uh, a a anything is it's a good day when I can, uh, say that I've been a working actor in Los Angeles for, you know, 30 years now. Uh, we're talking again, a slim sliver of people get to say they've been able to do that. And Right. I, I, I have no preference in terms of what's better than the other. It's all, it's all great fun. It's all a blessing. It's uh, amazing fun to do. So, and that, you know, at one point you have to, you have to trust the whole, uh, process. You have to trust, Yeah. uh, a God that he's going to make things all work together because I, I used to wake up terrified going, what's next? Uh, I don't know. And now it's more like, uh, uh, what's next? I can't wait to see what is next. I have no idea. It's September 14th and something could come up in two weeks that I could be the next great adventure. I have no idea. Uh, Yeah. as I, as I say, it's, I uh, wake up every day gainfully unemployed. So you're always waiting for the next job to show up and create some more memories. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So what, what do you enjoy most about your work today? Um, I enjoy, I enjoy radio. Uh, that was, I'd say that was one, that was really my first love was listening to the radio as a kid with the uh, transistor radio stuck to my ear going uh, someday I want to be in radio. Um, certainly not knowing that, but in college I was on radio there and studied broadcasting and then wound up being on a few radio stations throughout Florida. I thought, well, this is fun. And then, uh, 1990, when I started doing acting and worked with universal, it just, it, I had a job at one of the stations, but then when I moved to Los Angeles, it just, it, it fell dormant. So I didn't do it. But then in, um, 2015, this radio station was opening up close to me, brand new station. And it was very close to where I was living. Sorry. I just woke my dog up. Uh, no and reason. I said, wow, I, you know, I live in the area. I'm close. I, I haven't been in radio. I haven't been in, in it for a while, but, uh, you know, I'd be interested to be a part if you need, uh, need some hosts and like, okay, great. And this began, like I said, seven years ago, and that wow. began me on my own night show, but then the morning host needed relief. So then I filled in for him and my, the co-host and I had such a great chemistry. They're like, wait a second, we got, we got to make you guys a show. So we did. And from that, they're like, this is so good. I think we can syndicate this. And we're like, great, let's do that. So now it's syndicated in over 20 different markets and wow. it's growing all the time. And so that's wow. every day waking up doing that fun. Um, you know, talking about silly stuff, uh, and keeping it, um, as we always say, car friendly, safe yeah. for anybody to listen to no hot button, no politics, nothing divisive, just fun, fun radio. It's really what it is. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. In fact, this was on, t oh, here's one. Nice. This is you'll like this. This is from today's show. I'm going to do a little mentalism trick here. Uh, cause this was one of the fun facts for today. I want each of you <laughs> to combine your age, your numerical age with the year that you were born and don't say it out loud, but take your age, add that to the year that you were born. Do you all have a number? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. The year you're born, add that with your actual age. Right. All right. For all yeah. of you, that number is 2022, the year 2022. Wow. Wow. That, that's that's one of those weird random facts that only this year and yep. not until the next thousand years will that ever add up for everybody. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a second, is that true? Wow, son of a gun. Works out that way. You definitely have to come back and do more of those if you're up for it. <laughs> oh gosh. Have somebody else from SpongeBob on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Who's your who so who do you guys who's the big who's the big white whale? Who would you like to get the most if you could get 
from each of you. I want to hear from you. I like to interview. Ooh, Who oh would you boy. like to get? Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, you get to go so on the many. spot too. You're so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Tell me one name. From the Julia, pu- certainly you must have some too. Oh, from the uh, puppet uh, from the puppetry world, my number one answer is Kevin Clash. Yes, I 100 percent agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Steve Whitmire for me. I'd love to talk to Steve. Yeah. Whitmire. Yeah. Jakey Whitmire. Uh, yeah. What about you, Jakey? Uh, oh, 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 um, I'm p- probably Peter Lenz. Yes, yeah. Peter Lenz would be Peter awesome. Lenz. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Matt Julius. What about you? Damn! Thanks for stealing mine, Jakey. That was gonna be mine. <laughs> Jakey just <laughs> all about say. I think we can have the same one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yo, you yeah, know who would also know. be cool? Right. Jim Cummings. Peter. Yes. Yes, definitely. Also, I will tell you this. I don't know if we can keep this in or not, but we we talked back and forth between Tom Kenny's band or something on getting him on in the past. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, he'd be cool to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Matt and Julius is really to ask, and you never know. Uh, yeah, you never know. We'll, we'll just tell him that we, we yeah. had you on. He'll be like, "Yeah, I'll do it." Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, mine, mine would probably have to be Peter Lynn's. Yeah, um, yeah. He was, he's been a big part of my childhood. And what about you, Julius? Um, wow, I don't, I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me that. Um, I think it'd be really cool to have Norm McNeil. Honestly, yes, good choice. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking of that too. A, a, a Peter story, going back to Peter Lynch for a second, because yeah. uh, while working on Men in Black, Tony Urbano was the puppet coordinator, so mm-hmm. he needed a group of puppeteers that were always available, and I was like me i'm in um and so it was i was uh it was myself and tim blaney and uh tom fountain and carl johnston um and probably drew massey we were always on set and always on hand to do these things and then there was one thing that was going to be shot in new york it's the scene where they're uh, giving birth to the octopus the squid out of the car and so we had to fly to new york and he said he wanted to find a puppeteer that was local yeah, so we had to travel to New York and find a local puppeteer to do the to do the voice of the baby, and we saw a lot of people. And Peter got that job, so we were working nice. with Peter. Oh wow! On that. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Go back to the question. I'm surprised nobody mentioned Bob West. <laughs> awesome. Bob West would be a blast to talk to. Oh yeah, Bob. Yeah, definitely. He's he's, yes. he's up there. He's he's up there. Definitely. Yeah. He's up there for sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. As an actor and puppeteer, what challenges would you say you faced during your career? Um, th- to master the waiting game, there to, you go. To to realize, yeah. uh, all things being equal, it's not personal. And this was a very valuable lesson I had helping cast a play one time. Oh wow! Um, Cheryl oh, wow. Hines is a friend of mine that I'd known for a while, and she was writing a play and producing it. And if she and I were the leads on it, and she needed help casting it, and so the part was for her best friend, this ingenue. Uh, girl in her 30s kind of role. And it was kind of a, a more brassy character than the ones she was playing. Someone with more of an edge. So we had this casting session set up. And <clears throat> there was no description, nothing she had in mind for the character, just you know the words on the page. That was it. And yet, we saw, I don't know, 50 to 75 different girls that day. But as soon as they walked in the door, some of them you go, yeah, not what I was, not what I was thinking. So you, as me as an actor, there's often times we walk in and you may sense that it's not going your way and whatever, for whatever reason, it's a Wednesday, who knows why. But yeah. I've realized it's because they just had something else in mind. It ain't you. And that's okay. It has nothing to do with your ability, your talent. It's just the way it rolls sometimes. So if you can... Uh, dispense with the, oh, I did something wrong, oh, the neuroses of all that stuff, and just go, hey, on to the next one. Your life will tend yeah. to go a lot better as an actor. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Matt, Matt yeah. I know this is your question. It makes sense for you to ask this. I was, was, was going to say you should ask this one. I was planning to. You've that. answered it a lot in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, this guy, I, I answered this Exact question, like five episodes in a row, poor guy. Yeah. yeah. God, he doesn't have to now. I'm saying that for oh, I'm gosh. the one that's just saying that. Do, watch watch so, Jakey, watch Jakey, watch Jakey make you do it again. Shut up. Oh, gosh. Just, I know he's going to. 
shut up. I'm not going to do that again. Okay. All right. So, so what piece of advice would you give to anyone who wants to get into acting or puppeteering? Um, yeah, a piece of advice. Uh, certainly, this goes with virtually anything uh, in, in the profession of entertainment. Tenacity. Tenacity. Hang on. Keep working at it. Keep plugging. Keep moving forward. Don't give up. Don't give in. Just keep staying tenacious. My father had a clipping on his wall for years. I wish I could remember it verbatim. But essentially, the, the point is, the world is filled with, with talented, unemployed people. The, the world is filled with people who have gifted beyond ability, and yet they're not tenacious. They don't stick with it. Uh, and so that's one of those, you know, epithets of life. Bon Mott's, I always say, is imagine it's like a 12-round boxing fight, and you're going into the ring with the heavyweight champ. You know your head's going to get beat in. But yeah. if you can cover for 12 rounds and stay standing, you will have eclipsed most people who have tried to outlast the heavyweight champ. Because a lot of people give up in the first, second round, third round. But honestly, your head's going to get yeah. tagged with some hits. But if you can just stay standing, keep at it. I mean, it sounds so cliche, and I've heard it too before myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But that's a lot of it, is keep, keep moving forward with what, do you, what you want to do. And there's, and, and there's way more avenues for it now. I mean, you're making your I own have. shows. Yeah, if I had this as a possibility, oh gosh, I'd have been doing this 45, 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you like to say to your fans and supporters of your work? <laughs> gosh, I have fans? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my first, first comment to them. Wow. Uh, thank you, both of you, for showing up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the most answer uh, uh, no yeah, I, great, great answer nobody's ever actually answered that uh yeah i i i i, I honored and flattered that uh, they know know me from anything um yeah uh i've i've i'm not my, in fact this was something my parents thought when i first decided to move to los angeles they were worried for me because they said oh gosh you had maybe dreams of wanting to be a star or a celebrity i was like no I didn't want any, I just wanted to be a working actor. And thankfully that's what I've become. I'm not a super celebrity. I'm not a star people recognize. Maybe from commercials they go, oh, you look familiar. But uh, just to be working is, uh, is, is the success of it all right there. And I know people want to be internet famous, just to be internet famous. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I didn't go out to have fans or, but just to be able to do work and that people appreciate it. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. That's awesome. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. If people would like to contact you, where can people find you? Uh, real easy. It's bradabrel.com. B-R-A-D-A-B-R-E-L-L.com. There you go. The website awesome. there. There's email on there. That's the best way. Yeah. Nice. We'll That's put it in the description for everybody to check out. Yeah. And if you want to hear the Ashley yep. and Brad show, you can listen every day. We've got a podcast. There's hundreds of these going back several years. You'll hear what we're doing on there. Search Wherever you get your podcast, search for the Ashley and Brad show. You nice. see that there. Nice. Yeah. Nice That's stuff. the same with this podcast. Awesome. We're everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And for the people mm -hmm. who are watching and listening, um, links to that podcast and, of course, Brad's website will be in the description. So mm -hmm. to, to close this out, so, of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Uh, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of or how would you define the word nostalgia? Oh, man. Uh, so much. It's, it's, it's what every, it's what everyone's clamoring for these days, because we live in a very uncertain world. People want familiarity. They want things that make them happy. And often that comes from a simpler time. And that's what creates nostalgia. Um, however, my father exactly. always used to say, there's nothing responsible for the good old days than a bad memory. So yeah. it could go either way, but nostalgia, it's the, sure. it's the stuff that makes you happy and the stuff that you remember. Um, from growing up or whatever. Music is the same way. Music creates uh, three-minute memories at a time. You go, I remember who I was when I first heard that song. Um, so it's all part and parcel, and that's kind of what we do on the radio is bring good memories and nostalgia every day. There you go. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. It's been an absolute yes. honor. Yes. Thank Thanks, you so much. Guys.
Yeah. Yeah. Jason, Chris, Matt, and uh, Wyatt, thanks a lot for having me. We'll definitely have to have yeah, you back on in the future. In yeah. a pleasure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Brad, thank you so much for being on, and we, we, we have a blast time awesome. with you, and, uh, and, and thank you for being a part of Childhoods because of Bo, Bo yeah. Buddy, and uh, uh. keep up your great work, and see you next time. Oh, I'll miss yeah. you, Tom, too, because I, I, I remember watching Doc McStuffins. Yes, yeah. that's right, oh, yeah. Chomp. Yeah, Mr. Chomp. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Right. Yeah. Julius, how about you take us out? Oh, yeah. It's been a while it's since one out. of Matt's friends has taken us out. All right. <laughs> Hmm. I'll, take, I'll, I'll take, I'll take, no, not that way. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we've absolutely enjoyed our time with Brad. Thank you, Brad. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Julius. Yes, uh, please check us out on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. That's also where the video version is of yeah, this episode for those listening. Yes, and for um, audio, you can find us Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, practically Apple Podcasts. Most of the places. Wherever you find your podcast. Wherever you find your podcast. Yeah. Uh, this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show has officially come to a close. We have absolutely enjoyed our time with Brad, and we thank you folks for joining us. And you're uh, worth it. Come back and find out who we got next week. So, yes. Uh, yes, awesome. you're worth it. Remember, you are worth it. Stay nostalgic. See you next week. Adios. You're worth it. Yeah, adios, well, you're worth it. Bye. Bye. See you next time on another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream us wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember that you are worth it and to always stay nostalgic. Bye-bye.